It's a scourge that perhaps doesn't get the attention it needs. Babies abandoned by their parents often left to perish. The statistics are alarming. An average of 3,500 children are abandoned every year. Many of them newborns who don't survive the night. But a dedicated team of scientists is helping to uncover how these children died, finding clues from what's written in the bones and what doing everything they can to ensure justice for them. Here's Lorenza. I'm obviously a complete super nerd. So I find beauty in the bones. I think it's beautiful architecture. Dr. Roxanne Thornton is dedicating her life to solving mysteries. But she's not a detective, at least not in the usual sense. She unravels how abandoned babies have died from birth to moments and months after and the clues lie in their delicate bones. But why bones? I don't know how much detail you want, but... <laughs> you can give the, the, Everything that we do in our life is literally written in the bone. But when we talk about a newborn mm -hmm. with a very short lifespan, mm. I would assume that there's not a lot written yet. So what do you look for? The first thing you're gonna do is, is it human? or is it animal? Because a lot of the times they get admitted to the service as human remains, but then when you open up, it mm. is either a small bird or a small mammal. It's mistaken quite often. If you look at your vertebral column, those central bodies can appear as little pebbles or stones. Mm. The ribs and the long bones can be mistaken for vegetation. Their stories often in the headlines, but mysteries rarely solved. When an abandoned newborn dies, nameless and without identity, only their physical remains can reveal how it happened. But it takes a rare skill set and extraordinary dedication to find the answer. Specialists like the bone doctor, the pathologist, and the forensic scientist piece together the puzzle. I enjoy using my knowledge to further the field so that we can find resolution and justice for people. And we've been granted a rare glimpse into the world they inhabit. Currently we have a lot of, many of them are illegal abortions, concealment of birth or stillborns. And then the last one, which is quite disturbing, is suspected infanticide. So these are children after the age of two months, all the way up to eight, nine months old, that have suffered violent deaths. About 3,500 children are abandoned in South Africa every year. 90% of them are newborns left in open fields, dustbins and pit latrines. Disturbingly, our country has one of the highest rates of infants killed within the first 24 hours of life for every child that survives to die. Behind this gate are rooms full of bones, but due to ethical reasons, we can't show them to you. What we can show you are models of actual infant remains. So if we look at this model, how old was this infant? Okay, so just based on the general shape and this opening over here, which is a fontanel, I would say that this is two months or less than two months. What kind of tools do you use to determine the age of the infant? Generally, we will take measurements of the long bone. So here we have the femur and the tibia, and these measurements correspond to reference standards, and they give us an idea of the gestational age of the deceased individual. A newborn has over 300 bones that are constantly developing, constantly growing. Some will fuse together to become 206 bones in adulthood. Roxanne, what are you looking at here? Okay, so this is an x-ray of a neonatal 
decedent or individual. And you can see over here, the top, these cervical um, vertebrae, they are unfused. So we've got vertebral arches over here, and we've got the centra, and these remain unfused until between two and five years old. So the baby's bones are constantly fusing to eventually form the whole? Absolutely. Um, a nice analogy would be a puzzle. If you think about it, these components are all the puzzle pieces and they are coming together to form a singular unit to support the neighbouring anatomy. Roxanne is one of the last witnesses to an infant's final journey. When the baby's remains are found and reported to the police, a forensic officer collects them for the state mortuary. That's where our story starts, with a highly skilled team examining the body for evidence of how the child died. So the body would show evidence of sharp force trauma, for example, a stab wound. The body may show evidence of blunt force trauma, that is being beaten with a blunt object, or the body may show evidence of strangulation. Dr. Yolanda van der Heide, senior pathologist at Cape Town's Observatory Forensic Pathology Institute, who performs the autopsy, carefully scrutinizes the little body for signs that might help investigators identify its biological mother. This unit works with cases of murdered and abandoned babies, as well as those who die after being dumped. It is illegal to abandon a newborn baby. Um, and this practice may be prosecuted in a court of law. The body of a newborn baby was brought in just over a week ago. For legal reasons, we can't show you the body, but we can still show you what the process entails. So I'm dressed in my protective clothing. Let's see what goes on inside this room. We're shown a printed X-ray of an actual case the body of the newborn baby still attached to its umbilical cord. This is a pre-autopsy x-ray of an abandoned newly born baby. And performing a pre-autopsy x-ray is very important because it gives us an opportunity to visualize both soft tissue and bone tissue. And the bone structure um, can then be assessed for any form of congenital abnormalities. X-rays sometimes reveal abnormalities, like birth defects. For our purposes, the team is demonstrating on a doll. In the autopsy room, Yolanda opens the body to retrieve the organs, performing a series of tests that can provide valuable clues. How can you determine whether the baby was born alive? So if there is air present in the lungs, this would indicate that the baby took a breath, breathed, and therefore lived. The lungs then would also be placed in water, and should there be air in the lungs, the lungs would float. Lungs that don't float indicate the baby died before taking its first breath. Body is that of a baby girl. The body demonstrates no evidence of injury. Yolanda will compile a detailed report on her findings. Then the collected evidence goes to a laboratory to test for DNA traces that might help in the search for the infant's mother or relatives. The samples that we would analyze could be anything from a swab from the inside of the cheek to a blood sample, any bones or hard tissue from the baby, a little clipping of their nail. Associate Professor Laura Heathfield from the University of Cape Town runs a series of tests using minute DNA samples from the evidence bag. So if there's a DNA profile that is generated from a crime scene, it can be searched against the database and hope for a match to identify who left that sample on the scene. So there is a chance that a biological mother or father's DNA profile could be on the database. 
and that could be used as an investigative lead to identify who the parents are. Unless they have a criminal record with archived DNA, finding a biological parent on the National DNA Database is near impossible. But it's hoped the efforts of experts like Laura, Yolanda and Roxanne will result in more convictions for child killers. Does that not disturb you then to work on cases like that? It is. There is an emotional burden to it. You learn to cope. You become desensitised to it. That doesn't mean if I have a particular case, I don't um, fall into tears sometimes. As taxing as the job can sometimes be, Roxanne's deep fascination with bones fuels a determination to listen to the stories they tell. What goes through your mind when you analyse the remains of an infant? It reminds me that there's beauty in the world. Even though these cases come from very cruel and ugly circumstances. Every case that I process, I feel honoured to do that. I think, you know, I'm giving them space, I'm giving them voice, I'm giving them attention. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.